Welcome back to my little Flash tutorial here. Now, where we last left off, I'd explained a lot about layers, sounds, and things like that. But here's a little thing. We also know how to edit symbols. So I bet you really want to do something with being able to make derivative symbols very easily. Because you can't, if you just edit a symbol as is, then you'll wind up editing the same symbol. You'll wind up editing every single copy that's currently on the stage, and there's no way to just edit that separate copy. But Thankfully, you can uh, make derivative symbols fairly easy. The first thing you're going to want to do is drag a symbol onto the stage like so. Now, you got it out here, so out in the menu you can see this option here, Duplicate Symbol. What that will do is it will make an entirely new symbol, in which case it is an exact copy of the old, so you can edit that one freely. Also, the copy that was on the stage will be converted into that new type. So. By double-clicking on it, like so, that's a shortcut for editing in place, as I didn't mention in the last video. But by doing that, you will go into the editing area. So here, you can make whatever changes you want. Let's say I want to color this into a white box. Okay, done. Now I can just double-click outside of the box, and we get back to the main stage. So, we've got a white box here, and we've got a red box here, which is our original one. So we've successfully made a derivative. You could do all kinds of other stuff, like you could extend this upwards and make it a like a weird shape like that, in which case it's not really a box anymore, but yeah, you can do anything there. Mm -hmm. Other things you're able to do are replace symbols. By right-clicking on symbol and selecting swap symbol, then you can select any other symbol that you've created, and you will replace that symbol in that particular keyframe with the different symbol that you selected. This can be very useful in certain situations, like if you want to make two different symbols representing an object in two different states, and you want that object throughout the animation to change its states. <coughs> Take for example, you've got a, a guy and you want him to be wounded, you would simply make a derivative symbol by uh, duplicating the symbol and then add wounds to that symbol to make him look wounded. And then in the animation at the point where he gets wounded, you would simply swap symbols to the wounded version of the guy. That's um, pretty simple in all, in all essence there. Another thing to remember is that when you make symbols, you can make them out of anything, including other symbols. This is, this I call it nested symbols because you can have one symbol, you can have one symbol that is actually a combination of two other symbols. So, if we are to take a if we are to take a look inside this symbol by double clicking as I showed you earlier, then we would see it is comprised of indeed two other symbols. And if we take a look inside this symbol, then we realize that it's comprised of some basic shapes. Now, <coughs> eventually this can be a little difficult to uh, to keep track of potentially if you got symbols within symbols within symbols and. Uh, it recurs recursive symbols that go on for several different iterations. But you can easily keep track of how far into the symbol tree you are by looking up here. This, as you can see, it represents the entire, the entire scene in our flash file. And a scene is basically just a collection of, uh, collection of frames and keyframes within the thing. There can actually be more, sim more scenes than just one per flash file, but I'll explain that later. And here we have the symbol that we've opened up first, and then the symbol we've opened up within this. We can actually click on these to go out into the previous symbols, or we can press this button to go back out one layer. I mean one level. Alternatively, to escape from them, we can just double-click outside of the symbol. Surprisingly, you can't do that in some of the newer versions of Flash. I find that really irritating. Another reason why I prefer this version Anyway, you may have been able to figure out that we can actually do tweening with these things once they're actually comprised into a double symbol like this, because of our failed example in the previous episodes. So if we place one here and one here, we can deliberately cause these things to move in uniform. And that is one way that we can move multiple different objects on a single layer. Another thing you might want to realize is that for any given layer, any given layer that does not have motion tweening on it, you're not restricted to one symbol per layer. 
As long as stuff isn't moving, sliding, and shrinking around, you can have as much crap on the screen as you want on that layer. So we can often use this to make a background layer that doesn't change for a while. So let's just make a badly drawn ground here with no gradients, no 3D shading, and no nothing. I could make better, but for the interest of expediency, I just want to make this very simple. Oh, there goes my library pane. So, like so, like so. Bam. Instant earth and sky. And you'll see I took I took care to only to make sure that there's no white exposed because that white area represents what is going to actually be seen if you publish this into an SWF file, which is a flash file. But the gray stuff is actually not seen when it's played normally, so you might want to keep that in mind. <clears throat> So it doesn't matter, really, the fact that we've uh, got multiple different objects on the background here, and we can even plop in additional symbols over the top of things. So if you want to have stationary objects on the background in certain scenes, then you can do that. So we make a keyframe there, and a keyframe there, and we want to have a box, uh, we want to have some boxes suddenly appear on the background. Yeah, we can do that. It's pretty crude, very, very primitive, and if you, we wanted these boxes to move, we'd have to put them on another layer. But, as you can see, we can put whatever we want as far as actually moving objects over this particular layer. So, say we want to put the box uh, here. Oh, and that's one other little trick that I forgot to mention. It's called, uh, it's called Paste in Place. Now, whenever you copy an object, if you just try and paste it with Control v it appears in the center of the screen here. But, using a little option known as Paste in Place, which can be which can be accessed through the menu here, or you can get it by hitting Control plus Shift plus V, it will paste it in exactly the same place as it was where you last left off in the given target layer. So as you can see, it appeared over there, and even if we scroll over here, it appears over there. But we want this box to move around here, so that's how paste in place is going to be useful. So we motion tween it and we move it across the screen when the other two boxes appear. So you can do a lot of things, like you can have people moving across the screen while you're, you can have them fighting and doing other such things in your animations. Yeah, it's very flexible. Now with only two minutes to go, I better be quick and uh, showing off this new uh, new thing. Now, as we know before, we've got a little animated GIF file prints money here. So as we import it, we've got a we've got this little symbol here. But right now, if we take a look inside this symbol, we realize that it is it actually has its own frames and you know has its own keyframes here and its own set of layers is completely separate from the layers out in the rest of our file. So we can customize these things very easily. We can plop on another layer, we can draw stuff over it. But all of that stuff once we once we actually put it on the scene is going to be consolidated into the layer that it's placed in. But you can add a whole lot of detail to your animations because of that. Oh, and one more thing about animated symbols is the fact that they will only start automatically playing if they, when, when you're opening those things, if they are a graphic type. This is why, when I did that originally, I converted it into a graphic type. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm out of time right now, so I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna hang this up for now and uh, continue it on in the next video. Goodbye for now.